Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, new age, because we took a very different approach to setting up a consulting firm uh, than what a traditional consulting firm would. Uh, so instead of hiring a lot of consultants when we set up in 2017, what we did was we partnered with a lot of boutique consulting firm. So what that allowed us to do was scale up very quickly. So now, uh, in, uh, you know, we have about 300 uh, boutique consulting firms that we collaborate with. Uh, we have more than, uh, we had by the end of 2019, almost uh, 500 consultants who we could pick from for certain projects. Uh, we've delivered till the end of 2019, we've delivered about uh, close to 200 consulting projects in the region in the first three years within setting up. Um, 2020 was supposed to be a great year for us, like it was for everyone else. It was the turn of the decade. It was, it was meant to be a great year, but unfortunately, as we all know, it wasn't. Um, so what we decided to do after the initial shock in March and April is spent about 20% of our time on initiatives that will help get the economy back on track, right? Uh, one such initiative that we started last year was called the Superheroes Project, where we got about 700 business leaders from all across the GCC come in and uh, you know, support micro businesses and small businesses. Um, this year, we decided to do something for larger businesses as well. We thought we already have so many experts in our ecosystem. Why don't we all put together like a web summit where we come and share our expertise, our ideas, our thoughts with people like yourself and also hear back from you and see how we can get the economy back on track. Uh, what came with this idea was a, was a web summit called Connected Insights. Uh, so this is the first edition of Connected Insights that you're attending. It runs over seven days. Today is day four, where we're doing about 50 panel discussions and webinars and six workshops in the evening, right? Um, just look uh, before before I pass on to Anne Marie for, uh, uh, for for the core of this session. Uh, just look out in the chat for certain giveaways uh, because there's two main giveaways that we're giving away in the chat. Right, one is uh, for the workshops that we have every evening from five to eight p.m. Dubai time. These are paid workshops, two ninety nine dollars per workshop. But what we're doing is giving away three free tickets to anyone who's interested in this discussion and uh, fills up a short form. And the second giveaway is we're inviting speakers for the next edition of our, uh, uh, of this summit. Uh, so we have people like Asha and Khalid here who could be great speakers for our next edition as well and share their, their experience, their thoughts and ideas. So if you, uh, if, if you feel the in, uh, that you would be interested in it, please complete a short form, which we'll be sending out towards the end of this uh, session. So that's it from me. Uh, and Mary, I'm really looking forward to today's session. So handing over to you now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Varun. And um, I'm very uh, happy that I get to have this talk because the SDGs and the Sustainable Development Goals is something that's really uh, close to my heart and has also become a very core part of the company that I run today. Uh, it's called the Umbrella Institute. And we work with uh, any size company, but mainly mid-level and, and large companies here in the UAE who wants to transform their business and become more resilient and think a little bit differently. So uh, sustainability is really a driver for thinking differently. It's a driver for innovation and it's a driver for thinking out of the box uh, and collecting your team around the same interest and the same focus. So when it comes to the sustainability goals, I think most of us here have seen them, we've read about them. Uh, I have been part of talks since uh, 2016 was the first time I heard about it. And I thought, yeah, they're great. They are colorful. They are a little bit strange. I don't have a company that it fits. It's not for me. And since then I, I kept meeting them and I kept also being project manager for different projects where I heard especially government entities say that they were now incorporating the SDGs and they're working with them. But core to this is that the government, the, the commercial entities 
nowadays are the ones who will have the biggest potential out of implementing these SDGs because they are already doing a lot of the things that the SDGs wants us to do, but they're just not communicating it anywhere. So what we have been doing in the Umbrella Institute is we've worked with these companies and uh, they are really any size. It represents like a, a mix of Asha and, uh, and Khaled that it's someone who's heard about them, but it's also some, some companies who've worked with them for a long time, but they haven't really come to the place where they want to be. And most of them focus on SDGs as a sustainability sort of, they have them in the, uh, they look, look at their water usage, they look at the energy spends, they look maybe a little bit about their production methods, but it stays in a corner of the company and it's given to a person who's either called a sustainability manager or he's a technical guy, or it can also be the other way that it's given to an event uh, lady or a marketing guy. And they're supposed to run nice colorful ads and say, we're great, we're doing these things. But very rarely is it something that's spread across the entire organization um, and this cross-departmental work, because that takes someone to take lead of it. Um, so what we've built in the Umbrella Institute is a very simple system where we uh, put one person in charge in the company it could be let's use asha as an idea again she knows the sdgs a little bit she's worked with them she feels passionate about them but she also knows that her colleagues might not know anything about them or that she can see that marketing would have so many things to use it for but that they're not never ever communicating about them so the system we have made is that we help companies uh, set up a small team six to 10 people to keep it like uh, agile and smart. And, um, and this team goes through a few assessments where they're asked the same questions and together they actually find out, is it the right SDGs we're working with? Which ones of the 17 goals are the most relevant for us? Which ones are little peripheral interest and which ones we know they're interconnected, but which ones we don't really know to work with. So it's really a way of cutting through the 17 and saying, okay, these three or seven or 10 goals are the ones we want to work with. And from then on, then on it really takes, uh, it, it moves fast because then you can start to say the technical people in this group, you have to communicate to us what we're already doing and what we can be doing. And then you follow back. And then, then we start to discuss on a deeper level. And the same with marketing. How do you see, how can we make a video where the CEO talks about us being sustainable? So now we're already on a very practical level, but basically what I want to say is that the SDGs are of course very interconnected. You cannot take uh, goal 17 about partnerships without thinking about what you want to partner about. Is it water or electricity or is it uh, health or uh, education for all? but you can be better at some of them than the others. So that's the first focus that we focus on. We help companies progress from where they are now, either zero or a little bit, to being more confident that they can actually take steps and implement them in the, in the company. What we also very much talk about is that it has to be a core part of the company. Um, sustainability is not a, it's not a corner somewhere where there's one person sitting and saying, yeah, I'm doing sustainability because it's really about getting data and moving people and communicating throughout the company and on all levels, everybody from operations to the director and the CEO, but it's also about having all the departments we're now talking about being part of it. Um, and this is of course, not so simple in many companies and the bigger it becomes the, the the larger the problem scales right but with very simple setting up a person who is in charge of the communication in that team use asha again for instance she knows her team she knows who could be good at finding the right data from the operations and the technical team she also knows who in marketing makes the other people move fast right um, and who has the right ideas to implement it and she knows who in the management could be good at communicating it throughout the team. So another thing that we also keep seeing is that, um, especially in large companies, we have 
many of these leadership initiatives where we take the top management, the core six team or five people, we run them through months of a specific training or a specific course. We say, yes, sustainability is in our core DNA. Then we give middle management two, three, maybe 10 hours of the same training, but on a different level. And in the end, all of these hours that they've spent on incorporating something into the vision and mission, they put it in an email, they put it in a newsletter, or they communicated five or 10 minutes to the rest of the 90% the of the team. And when it comes to sustainability and, and the sustainable development goals, this really doesn't work because the people on the floor are also the ones who both have the ideas and will be the ones who implement the changes. So we see sustainability and, and the SDGs as being a driver for corporate culture. Um, and it really gives the employees a different purpose. All of a sudden they are part of transforming the company from, of course, what it is, it can be a company doing fine and well and nothing is wrong. Maybe they weren't that disrupted with COVID or with, uh, the financial crisis, maybe they even grew. But there are so many opportunities that they haven't yet touched if they didn't start to look at trans mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Radar? Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, again, sustainability as a driver is really something that's overlooked. We have the same discussions when we talk about digital transformation, which is also an, an old time thing, but that one often remains as part of a team, an IT team, and they, they tell you how you use the system, and then you're good to go. Maybe you use the system, maybe you don't. But when it comes to sustainability and, and implementing the changes in, let's say, uh, affordable energy and good health, this is really about uh, engaging the overall team and making them a core part of achieving the successes and even telling us what is success for us. How do we make sure that our CSI initiatives are success if it's only uh, known to a part of the company that the CSR initiative is actually going on? Or how do we make sure that some of the really passionate employees who goes and does their own initiatives every weekend, even with their families, that they take this and make this a part of their work and communicate to the CEO that if we as a company go into this partnership, maybe it's not in our core right now, but we can be passionate about uh, energy transformation or we can be part of uh, educating a larger population that's right now lacking this then we're all of a sudden we're transforming something because it's very few resources for the company to do this, but it includes making your employees a lot more passionate about what they're doing. And even the fact that one small person in a thousand person organization can help implement an initiative in a company that really drives loyalty. It means that this person who's been sitting in a corner, maybe doing something, let's say he's an IT guy sitting in the corner, but he's been part of um, restoring, uh, yeah, or giving away food to uh, different societies. He can now take this and be proud of it and share it with the other colleagues. Maybe even he will be highlighted for this by his CEO or his superiors. So sustainability goals are an opportunity to communicate internally to find all the really powerful resources you have on different levels of the organization and to drive them to changing some of the things that we're doing in the companies right now. If we go back a little bit, uh, we also work with quite a few companies that, uh, that spend a lot of money on CSI initiatives. And um, I, I worked with a Danish company the other day and uh, the chief customer relations officer, she listed out a whole list and she sat with her seven colleagues and they said, I've never heard of it. And it's not that big a company, it's 300 people, I believe. Um, 
So, and, and she had put a lot of energy into this. She knew that the CEO had put a lot of energy into it, but the person that she spoke to quite a lot of the time had never heard of the initiative that she'd been working on. And I think that's, again, one of the things that we have to come back to, the open communication in, in uh, organizations. Let's not be afraid to talk about the good things we do. We don't have to share it with our external stakeholders if we don't want to, if we're not afraid that, uh, or if we're not sure that they're interested, but share them internally. Make sure that your colleagues and your teammates on the other side of the hall knows that something is happening. Um, I think uh, a word that's not used nearly enough is uh, green hushing, not green washing as we hear quite a lot and which makes companies very afraid. Green hushing is the opposite and it's actually a lot more powerful because it means that, um, I, I I'll give an example. I work with a very large Indian corporation here in the UAE and they have been for years feeding some of the, uh, their non-employees in their labor camps. So they have an initiative uh, not yet hashtagged, I would say, that's called no one leaves here hungry at night. So anyone can come to this labor camp and say, I would like a bed to sleep in and I would like to have some food and they would be given this. It's not noted anywhere, it's not put on boards, it's not put anywhere. When I heard this, I said, that's amazing. What, what happens if 3000 people come and said, we'll find a way? Okay, but will, do you want to scale it up? Yes, this is really a core part of what we believe our company is. Okay, so who do you tell it to? Uh, it's okay. So I said, so where do you get the food from? Well, I call up my friend at uh, one of the big uh, supermarkets and he gives me some things. And if I need blankets, I call up another friend because he's the CEO of another company. He will give me blankets and pillows. Okay, so you're already doing partnerships, right? You're already making a very, nice infrastructure for saving or helping people to, uh, to have decent work or even economic growth. Many of the unemployed people who come there and ask for food are also given a job because they actually very often look for a job and they need people all the time. So even if they don't need them inside their organization, then they will go and give them to another organization. Again, the CEO calling another CEO saying, hi, I have uh, 10 very well-trained people here who are specific to your company, right? So now it's an exchange of goods, right? You give something in return, you get something in return. No one is putting this anywhere. And of course, this is really, really great. But what the SDGs is also preaching is systemic change. So the more we can make this uh, a smart and systematic approach, where other companies, for instance, would know to go and say, I have food every day, I have leftover bread or all the cans I want to get rid of, instead of throwing it in the uh, container, I would like to give it to this initiative. Or we have lots of pillows every month because this is business. So um, we work with green washing as, of course, the risk management of sustainability right we're all afraid to be called uh, uh, called out for doing something that was not the intention but green hushing is really the same it's a shame that we spend uh, time and money and just effort on something that could have that can save a lot more people and help a lot more people so what i'm hoping that you will do is uh, take the SDGs, because the SDGs are not just for organizations or for governments or for companies, it's also for individual people. We as uh, unemployed can also say, I'm really passionate about one of the SDGs or I like the SDGs, let me communicate about them. No one owns them the way saying that you cannot communicate about them. You can go out, I have a very good friend sitting here next to me in Sustainable City and she's very passionate about the SDGs uh, she makes, she has her full Instagram profile, which I think, you know, there's a lot of people doing this, but what she helps with is communicating it, right? Because what I can still be very um, sad about is that I also go to very big companies that have never heard about the sustainable development goals yet. And I keep thinking how they can open a newspaper and not see them, but they can. Yes. 
I think um, I've, I've spoken a lot and I would love to hear some of your interests. Maybe even if I go to Asha, uh, do you have do you have any any comments or anything about what you've what you've heard you because you've also worked with them so you already have uh, interest in them. Unmute myself. Now I've unmuted myself. Thank you, Anne Marie, for asking me that. Um, in my understanding and in my scope of work with CSR. Uh, we've come to understand that working in silos, you know, having each employee do what they wish to do to affect some kind of greater good has a smaller impact on what they're doing. But when we consolidate it and use it as a platform with the corporations that we are in, then we are able to affect some kind of greater good through the whole effort. Uh, and I would think that instead of, you know, any company making like a very ambitious goal of, of uh, working with all the 17 SDGs, that's a, a bit unrealistic. Mm -hmm. So people would have to identify what are the SDGs that are relevant to them, that are relevant to their operations, and that uh, would make sense for them to tie in as an organization. And like you rightly said, you know, without a buy-in from everyone, it would be quite pointless. Um, one is a buy-in and two is the metrics to support it. I mean, just going on paper and saying, okay, this was the budget. This was what we achieved. You know, these are the organizations we fed and we clothed. Uh, that's one thing, but bringing it back in terms of an impact, in terms of measurement in how their lives were changed in what percentage was given and what percentage was received. Uh, you know, those are the kind of metrics today that, uh, that anyone can access. I mean, all of this information is available through various bodies, you know, uh, on the net. And it's just for us to tap into it and get the right metrics going so that it has a meaningful impact. Uh, like you also said, rightly, it's not about just one organization thriving or one person stepping up and saying, okay, this is my track record, you know, of what I've done. But it's more about uh, a cause campaign that the United Nations is bringing forth, you know, where organizations tie up into that one cause. And uh, sustainability means not just one country or one person or one organization thriving and getting better, but it's about uh, the entire community, the entire world, you know, getting uplifted through these movements. And that I think is just so vital for us to understand how how we are just a small piece of that puzzle, yeah. you know, by tying into the SDGs. Uh, it's a great way to build awareness amongst us all. Yeah. Uh, are there anyone else in the audience who are already working with the SDGs, who's seen some changes in the organization while doing it? Oh, I can take that if you'd like, you know. Yes. Sorry, I'm hogging up the space. Oh, no, but just to say, you know, with dynamic services, the company that I manage, so we've taken one SDG, which is eradication of poverty. And now, if I want to just track my own record and say, like, you know, this is what I did to feed X, Y, and Z, um, it is a good effort, but this is something that has been ongoing in the world. But for me to tie up with the right organizations to have a wider reach is more important. Mm -hmm. So we've started a regular giving trend with the United Nations share the meal concept. So by donating to these organizations regularly, we understand that you know communities which were non-reachable before would be reached through the effort of these larger organizations. And that's also what we talked a little bit about, like the systemic change, because then there's a lot less money going on administration or even just waste and waste and time. Yes, yes. And because it's really, they know how to do it and they have the infrastructure to do it. You know, yes. I have a comment in the chat. Richard, the founder of Yes For Us, uh, she actually spoke yesterday as well. So Richard, yeah. do you want to spend one minute? She works with youth on environment sustainability initiatives aligned with a few of the SDGs. Richard, do you want to spend a minute talking about it? That's yes. Okay. 
Yes. Hi, Varun. Sorry, for some reason, my video is not opening. I don't know what's the problem. Hi, everyone. I'm Richa. I run a platform called Youth Environmental Sustainability with Youth. And uh, we focus on six of the UN SDGs uh, uh, with the youth uh, in relation to life on land, life on earth, and, you know, climate change and um, uh, a few others. And uh, the idea of our platform is to make youth aware of the different issues through our fun workshops. And then we incentivize them for creating impact to make a mindset shift in the longer term. And <clears throat> while the focus started on youth, we're seeing more and more corporates coming in and their employees uh, showing the interest because we believe for the circular economy to have a long-term effect, it cannot be just the youth, uh, you know, going ahead and learning the uh, importance of the SDGs and their parents or employees not reacting in the same way. Or we've seen that a lot of corporates in UAE are, are at a very high level in terms of their greener footprint. But when you we do surveys at their employee level, we yeah. are not resonating with the same thought process. So it is, you know, as Anne Mary, you rightly said, it is very important to bring everyone together at the same platform if we want to see an impact of these. SDGs, not just for the sake of having a tick in our checklist that we have worked towards this SDG once or twice, but we really are working towards a longer term change. Thank you. Uh, I think it's really very interesting. I had a, a, one of the attendees the other day in one of our sessions. He had never heard about the SDGs. It's one of the first questions we asked. He had never heard of the SDGs and he was, he was very interested. Um, and then uh, I hear from the back end that he went home and he said to his wife, I just heard about these uh, SDGs. And she said, yeah. And she made him talk for five minutes. And in the end, she says, husband, I've been working on these SDGs and educating my kids about them for three years. I've been talking at the table <laughs> about these and you haven't heard anything. Like, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because you can keep communicating it. But it really takes makes like make sure to engage them and make sure they have their wide eyes and ears open. Uh, that's that's when something happens. Sure, Absolutely. you know, uh, it's like a leaky bucket, right? So you keep filling it in, and you know it just sort of leaks. Uh, so before before we take any more questions, I'm just conscious of time as well. So before we take any questions, would it be okay if we just take a quick a uh, photo, we like to take a quick photo for memory as well as uh, for social media, of course. Uh, so if I could ask people to turn on their videos, fix their hair, so we can take a quick photo uh, before, uh, and feel free to, if you have any other questions, we don't have to end uh, right away. We can also take a couple of questions if that's okay. So, and uh, when I'll say, after everyone has fixed their videos, I'll say one, two, three SDGs, so that we can all, uh, or I'll say SDG that'll you know that'll have a smile as well then yeah I'll give everyone five more seconds brilliant one two three SDG SDG sorry I have two screens so Perfect. Uh, we don't have to end right away. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Uh... Yeah, I'd like to throw something in because um, like, I, like I mentioned in my intro, I, I was in the corporate for many years and then I work as a small consultancy at the moment. And I'm sure a lot of you who are in the similar position know that over the last year or so, a lot, a big chunk of the business of the market and of the economy who are the small players like ourselves, we had to really ruthlessly prioritize activity to what puts money on the table today or tomorrow. Uh, and it seems like a lot of sustainable goals, they have a payback further down the road in the future, which is a luxury probably the big corporates can afford, but not people uh, at a smaller level. So when we hear talk about sustainability and goals, we nod our heads, we feel, yeah, yeah, that's great. But I don't have the time or the resources to invest in it right now, unless it's, uh, it's a volunteer work or something. Mm. So is there an answer to that? Is there, is the, are there goals that put money on the table today or tomorrow? Or is there a way around it that to involve a large population of people? 
Well, I think you're very right that that many initiatives take time, and uh, and we also have some of the clients who come and say we want to make an ESG report, a sustainability report, and we say, have you done any initiatives? And they say no. It takes time. That's one hundred percent sure. But what I can tell you from the beginning is, as soon as you start to talk about the SDGs or your sustainable uh, initiatives with your external uh, audience something shifts okay because you're still in the position as almost any size company in the world you're still in the position to be a first mover in this field um and it means that you will set yourself apart you're you have a new uh, parameter for competition that your uh, competitors are not still using right you can now say that you have uh, I will give an example. I worked with a company that makes little valves for air conditioners, and they've made the same ones for the same for the last 30 years. Okay, and it's very energy efficient. It's very effective. And once you put this into your air conditioning, it it's on a bigger scale. But then it really makes your energy. Uh, but they have never communicated this to any of their audience. All of a sudden, they found out once we start to do that, then companies want to buy us because they also have stakeholders who are asking them in their supply chain to be more sustainable. So I think that of course, sustainability takes time, but some of it is immediate actions and immediate changes. And it will also roll in as when you begin to see that that has an impact uh, in the communication and your sales, then you say, ah, but this we're also doing, and we're also doing this and we have a calculator doing this. Okay. so. We have all, all of a sudden changed our communication radically because we're thinking differently, right? And then some of the impact will come along the way, but with sustainability, you can also just communicate about the impact you're wanting to make. So I think that uh, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money at all. It costs time and effort and courage, and courage can be quite expensive. Um, but of course, with time comes the big impact, but you can see changes immediately. Uh, there's a question from Farheen. Uh, Hello, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, actually, it's like a comment more than a question. Uh, I'm Farheen, and we are working in uh, environment sustainability and wastewater management in uh, UAE and Lebanon. So currently, uh, I'm working for the environment hall and the sustainability with the impacts of wastewater management treatment, especially in UAE. As we all know, there are really huge trucking systems uh, right now, and we are facing so many problems with the wastewater treatment, especially in the whole region, if you would say. So uh, what uh, we are feeling in our organization is we are promoting the research and development, especially in terms of understanding all the SDGs, uh, but we are as uh, focusing more on environment and uh, especially the wastewater treatment. So uh, what I believe is uh, we need to promote the research as soon as we would be aware of as uh, I totally agree with Asha that uh, she has said that awareness is the first thing that we all have to be uh, known. So the research which we are working on and we are involving the other communities in other regions as well. And uh, uh, being a science diplomat as well, I always uh, encourage people to work with the different uh, and multidisciplinary tasks holders in the region and also involve uh, the researchers, especially when it comes to the SDGs. Because I think if uh, you would not known about the problem, what is going on, uh, not only in your area, but in other countries as well, you would not get the solution ever. So research is the basic theme and uh, the development. It has to be, I think, implemented in each and every organization. They must have a research and development department or within even one or, two, one or two persons are working for that. But I think it would include the ideas from other employees in the same, uh, uh, you can say, the company. So uh, as we are working on, we have uh, a lot of uh, multidisciplinary task persons in our team. And they are... we. A few of them are not really indulged with this, but uh, we are involving them 
through posting, uh, you know, and in, uh, sending them some researches and involving them to show their ideas. So it would bring a lot of, uh, yani it would have a lot of efforts as well, but eventually we have a really good result in the end. And this is what I believe that every organization must have it. Thank you. Yeah, very good comment. I agree 100%. Research and analysis. There's a lot of data not being analyzed well. So yes, for sure. Perfect. Uh, we can have one more question if there's any other question and then we'll close out. Uh, if not, we can, we can wrap up. Correct, Anne-Marie? Anything yes. else from you? Perfect. No, thank you very much for your very, very high engagement level and uh, keep asking questions. You're most welcome to come. And I would also love to help your companies. If any of you want to transition, I will definitely help you. We have a free setup for, for the first part of it. So can we can connect with me and then we'll talk more. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.